there's still talk about quarantining California. Talk by other states and talk from the federal government. And the debate continues over the use of poison to combat pests. We'll have all aspects of that story tonight on Nightline. And tonight on Newswatch 7 Update, no quarantine, at least for now. And Mexican-American inmates make demands in Lincoln. These stories and more next on Update. You know, baseball's the same in Japan as it is in America. You play nine innings. Three strikes and you're out. Show out, And after the game, there's nothing like a beer. And when Numa's in town, I treat him to light beer from Miller because it tastes great. Mmm, cream. Yeah, I know it's less filling, but we drink it because it tastes great. Cutting down. Listen, Numa, it tastes great. See y'all cutting down. All right, it's less filling. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and cutting down. Say, Dean Rawson, is it true that you'll sell a 1981 Datsun for only $47.74? You bet. And is it true that for this week only, I can finance a new Datsun for 6% under the prime interest rate? Anything you want. Then I really can get a new Datsun for only $4,774 and a loan at 6% under the prime rate? How is all of this possible? Easy. <laughs> Oh, Newton, where are you going? Uh, malfunction in, uh, Mansville. Well, sure. you did try to solve the problem first by long distance, didn't you? No, I didn't. Newton, if you can solve the problem by long distance, you save them and yourself a lot of time. Oh. What have I got to lose? Just a whole day in Mansville. Just a whole day in Mansville. Long distance. It's the way to get things done today. You're watching 7 TV, the news specialists. This is Newswatch 7 Update. Good evening, I'm Carol Schrader. FBI officials in Miami are interviewing passengers tonight of an Eastern Airlines jet hijacked to Cuba this morning. Agents say the two suspected hijackers, apparently Cubans, were arrested in Havana. Eight others, thought to be relatives of the hijackers, got off voluntarily and were also detained. Now, it's not known if there were any Nebraskans or Iowans on that jet. Meanwhile, FBI agents here in Omaha are after management hijacking cash from a savings and loan. The man's in his 50s, and in a gentlemanly manner, he's held up the commercial federal savings and loan twice. The second time today, shortly after noon, he was armed with a handgun and wore a mask. Employees swear it's the same man who robbed the place exactly four weeks ago. The amount of cash taken today still undetermined. Workers here are having no doubts this is something they don't want to be a habit. Lance Tipke has been sentenced to 40 years hard labor for the murder of Wrangler basketball player Connie Kuntzman. Tipke had pled guilty to second-degree murder. Lance Tipke's attorney, Arthur O'Leary, asked Judge Paul Hickman to consider a reduced sentence. O'Leary told the court Tipke is in no way a threat to society. His case just doesn't fit the system for anything more than a voluntary manslaughter charge. Judge Hickman delivered the sentence of 40 years at Nebraska's penal complex. Tipke will be eligible for parole in seven years. A Douglas County District Court jury has found a second Omaha teenager guilty of first-degree murder and the shooting death of an elderly Omaha man during an attempted robbery. 85-year-old Joseph Johnson was shot and killed when he answered his door the evening of March 9th. Today, the jury returned a guilty verdict on 17-year-old Juan Bradley. Bradley's accomplice, 17-year-old Brent Hubbard, was found guilty June 4th of firing the weapon that killed Johnson. Sentencing dates for both youths have not been set. Meanwhile, Omaha and Christopher Laguerre has been bound over for trial in the murder of Donna Kressel of Omaha. Laguerre is charged with first-degree murder. Mrs. Kressel's body was pulled from the Missouri River June 28th. A Mexican-American inmate organization is demanding that the state take steps to bridge what they say is a communications gap in the correction system. Inmates voiced their concerns at a special meeting today. Capitol Bureau Chief Doug Parrott attended that meeting, but no cameras were allowed. 
There are several dozen Mexican-American inmates at the state penitentiary in Lincoln, and many other Hispanic-speaking citizens being held at other state correctional facilities. Some of these inmates have little knowledge of the English language, and that has caused severe problems when they've come up for discipline or parole hearings. Today, about 15 people, including four state senators and members of the Mexican-American Commission, met with Hispanic inmates about this problem. The inmates say they need a full-time bilingual interpreter on the parole board staff, as well as a Mexican-American on the board to stop what they claim is an insensitive, discriminatory position that's currently been taken by prison and parole officials. After the two and a half hour meeting, one participant said something must be done soon before inmates take matters into their own hands. I think that was pretty evident today. I think, you know, not only from the Mexican American uh, inmates, but from uh, the Native American and some of the Anglo inmates that uh, I think the feeling is, is that they're just about fed up with what's the inactivity, I guess, of, of uh, the parole board and the administration and not at least meeting them halfway in some of their requests. And I think it could prove to, pretty, to be a pretty volatile issue if it's not handled correctly. Several of the senators attending today said they will seek funds for the interpreter spot and added that if such a position is opened, then the inmates and Mexican-American staff should be consulted in selecting the candidate. Doug Parrott, Newswatch 7 Update, Lincoln. Still to come on Update, more violence tonight in England. And Nebraska Congressman compromise in the Norton Dam Project. Hello again, everybody. I'm George Thompson, and this is my Series 60 Fleetwood Special. Car buffs will recognize it as the biggest standard Cadillac ever manufactured. And many in Omaha will recognize this as a symbol of quality automatic transmission repair. You know, we've worked hard building that reputation, and we mean to work even harder keeping it. All car transmissions, a recognized name in quality automatic transmission repair. Welcome to TV Land. You name it, we got it. And if we don't got it, we can get it. Get it? Uh, I think so. We'd like to see a Curtis Mathis. Forget it. I can't get it. I'm Curtis Mathis. You can buy most TVs just about anywhere. But you can only get a Curtis Mathis from someone qualified to sell and service it. A Curtis Mathis dealer. Now, that makes us a little harder to find, but well worth the effort. You'll find Curtis Mathis products exclusively at these dealers. The world's most advanced drivetrain switches between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive this simply. American Motors introduces Select Drive to the American Eagle. Four-wheel drive security at highway speeds. Four-wheel drive traction off-road. And as simply as this, two-wheel drive mileage matching citation. Now the world leader in four-wheel drive makes switching to two-wheel drive this simple. See all the tough Americans at these local AMC dealers. Something grand just happened at Perkins, and it starts with a full third pound of ground beef. New sour cream, onion, and tomato. New chili, cheese, and onion. Mushroom and cheese. The new supreme. New ham and cheese. Introducing the Grandwiches, all five, all new. At Perkins. The Mediterranean fruit fly today brought the federal government and the state of California into direct confrontation. But it was Governor Jerry Brown who backed down. The Secretary of Agriculture said he would order a federal quarantine of California fruits and vegetables if Brown did not order aerial spraying of pesticide. Members of the National Guard were out in the Santa Clara Valley, stripping trees of fruit that may have been infested when Governor Brown the made the announcement. The United States Department of Agriculture to quarantine statewide 200 types of fruits and vegetables leaves California with no alternative. We're being forced into aerial spraying. Aerial spraying with the chemical malathion will begin at midnight Tuesday. The area is heavily populated and opposition to aerial spraying is just as heavy. Aerial spraying? I have a daughter-in-law of Sunnyvale that's pregnant. I'm livid. Uh, we did try and institute a lawsuit to prohibit it, and that has not been successful. I don't know what other alternative we have. 
There is scientific debate over the health effects of malathion spraying, but the state's agricultural community has long been demanding aerial spraying. The reaction of today's to today's decision by this group was joyous. The hope is, of course, the fruit fly infestation can be kept from spreading from the Santa Clara Valley to the state's prime agricultural areas. If not, it could mean disaster for the state that produces half of the nation's fruit. More on the fruit fly problem tonight on Nightline. Still in California, the city of San Francisco was hit by an early morning fire that turned into the biggest since the 1906 earthquake. The fire erupted in an abandoned bathhouse and roared through at least 21 buildings before firefighters could stop it. It was hours before the debris could be searched for possible victims. Many of the buildings were apartment houses. No fatalities were discovered in the first search of the burned out city block. Authorities believe the fire is of suspicious origin and will continue their investigation of arson. The calm has been broken again tonight in England, this time in the London suburb of Brixton. About 400 young people have been battling police in the predominantly black area. Cars were overturned and the youths hurled bricks and bottles at police. It was only the latest in a series of riots hitting two of Britain's major cities. The British government continues to debate the cause of the violence and what punishment, if any, should be handed out. In Belfast, Northern Ireland, the body of Irish hunger striker Joseph MacDonald was buried today alongside Bobby Sands. What started as a peaceful funeral procession turned into a riot when British police tried to arrest gunmen who fired a volley of shots over the coffin. The O'Neill Water Project has generated controversy for some time now. Today, the Nebraska congressional delegation notified the federal government that several alternative plans are being considered, and the federal government has agreed to undertake a study. We have this satellite report from our Washington correspondent, Mark Trang. As a result of the agreement between Nebraska House members and the Interior Department, a full field-level reconnaissance study will be undertaken in the Atkinson O'Neill area in the next 120 days. The alternatives to the present project include a diversion dam on the Niobrara River, a canal system to the Atkinson O'Neill area, and an artificial groundwater recharge pumping plant. Congressman Hal Dobb helped put together the agreement, and he says the alternative study is needed. Essentially, it's an option or an alternative study format to see if we can find a publicly acceptable, less costly alternative to groundwater reclamation and provide uh, water for irrigation uh, for the O'Neill uh, Atkinson uh, Springview area. One problem with O'Neill is that the project lacks a plan to recharge the groundwater. Dobbs says it's possible one of the alternatives will prove to be better than O'Neill. I've never been uh, fully sold on the project. That is to say, I've felt that uh, it was neither uh, uh, too great or too bad. I think it's kind of one of those middle water reclamation projects. I do question whether all of the acres currently designed or designated for irrigation uh, in a cost-benefit sense uh, need to be uh, a part of that project. The agreement cuts the funding for O'Neill in fiscal year 1982 from $3.3 million down to $500,000, just enough to keep the project barely alive. Mark Trank, Newswatch 7 Update in Washington. Next, Charlie Martin tells us we can expect a return of high temperatures and high humidity. Got summer projects? Turn on the, turn on the, well, turn on the savings at Our Own Hardware with this circular full of values. Like an Our Own 150-watt flood lamp for $298, a Burgess Jungle Fogger for $27.88, and a GE Portable Radio for $19.99. Look for this banner at participating Our Own Hardware stores and visit your local Our Own store for all your summer project needs. <laughs> like a new nozzle! What a shopper. Cantaloupe, 53 cents. Try eating it, Fred. Bargain brand paper towels, 39 cents. Try using them, Fred. If you really want your money's worth from a paper towel, try using Bolt. It's amazing how many jobs you can wring out of one sheet. In tests, Bolt not only absorbed more than Bounty and Scott towels, it proved stronger to keep on absorbing. How did you get so smart? Practice, Fred. Practice. Bolt. It isn't finished till the job is. Huber! Isn't that a Chevy up ahead? 
Huber Chevrolet has made special arrangements with this area's largest banks to finance your new Chevrolet at 6% below prime. But hurry, Omaha, this is limited time offer. You must act now. Choose from Huber's entire new vehicle inventory. T-tops, diesels, Cavaliers, Corvettes, even Winnebago vans. And finance your purchase at 6% below prime. So hurry to Huber. While the money is plentiful and selection is great, Huber, 111th and West Dodge Road. It's bigger than big. It's hotter than hot. It's the fabulous July clearance at the Nebraska Furniture Mart. Already low prices have been slashed even further. You'll find super saving prices on hot point refrigerators, freezers, air conditioners, big bargains on hot point dishwashers, washers and dryers. The season's low prices on hot point microwaves and ranges. See how much you can save in the spectacular July clearance at Nebraska Furniture Mart, Omaha. And things like we that. We were talking about interest rates going up, and I guess that leads to temperatures going up. Well, the temperatures went up today. They'll go up tomorrow. They'll go up Sunday. They'll go up Monday. They'll not go not up more Tuesday. and more and more. No, but just about the same level, oh. which is enough for most folks. Uh, you know, we don't need uh, double digit inflation on in the temperatures. Thank you, folks. Let's take a look at today's highs. We'll show you they were warm enough. Uh, 80s were confined mostly to the northeast portion of our area, otherwise, well into the 90s. Almost 100 around our area. It did get up into 100 out through South Dakota, with the high spots being Shadron, Nebraska, and uh, at Huron, South Dakota, with 102. And it looks like more of the same tomorrow. Meanwhile, you would expect maybe a little relief from the high temperatures with some evening showers. Not so tonight. We indicate one lone shower, and lone it is, around Storm Lake, Iowa, moving to the northeast. Well, here it is, folks. We've got a warm front that went through today just as we predicted, and we got into the humidity just as we predicted. We're going to have suddenly winds all through the weekend. This low is going to stay just about stationary, and it's going to keep pumping that moisture direct from the Gulf of Mexico. And with abundant sunshine, just a few puffy cumulus clouds during the afternoon, it's going to get hot. We're going to see temperatures well into the 90s while, all during the weekend, and it looks like this thing is going to stall till probably about Wednesday of next week if we can stand it. And that's going to be our weather pattern. There may be one or two scattered isolated showers during the afternoon and evening, but they're going to be so few and far between, we don't even put them in the forecast. Here's what's happening right now. It's still warm. Fair skies, and it's 87 degrees officially in Omaha. It is clear and 87 in Lincoln. Humidity in Omaha, 57%. Suddenly winds at 10, and we have a falling barometer at 29.95. For today, 69 was our low, 98 was our high, still off the record of 103. There's your sunrise and sunset times for tomorrow. Across the area for Saturday, going to look like this, just about the same. That front's going to linger there, promising relief, but not delivering. Partly cloudy skies by afternoon. Again, hot and humid. Temperatures upper 90s to 100 across most of the area. Details of the forecast, including the Lincoln vicinity. Tonight, fair, warm, and humid. Only dipping down to 74 degrees, and it'll be a humid 74 at that. Southerly winds at 8 to 18 miles an hour tonight. Tomorrow, more like today, partly cloudy, hot, and humid. High up to 96 or within a few degrees of that. Some places could again see locally near 100. Tomorrow, there will be a bit of a breeze. It suddenly winds at 12 to 22 miles an hour and occasionally gusty. Tomorrow night, fair, warm, and again humid. Low only down to 75. And then on Sunday, not much change, partly cloudy, again hot and humid. A high up to 97. And as I say, we don't look like we're going to break this pattern until about Wednesday of next week. There's just all the upper winds are blowing from the southwest, and you don't get anything coming down into our area with the upper winds pushing it all into Canada. You know, there's a real danger of people doing all their work on the weekends with this high humidity, isn't there? Especially if you're older, you're... That's true. People should health. be especially careful because uh, you may go out and the breeze may make it seem relatively cool, but with that high humidity, it's very, very easy to get heat strokes. So take it easy and take frequent breaks and get in out of the sun every chance you get. Uh, break really? all day long, maybe, huh? Yeah, with a nice cool one or whatever. <laughs> okay, thank you. Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau is in Washington tonight for talks with President Reagan on the upcoming economic summit in Ottawa. The Prime Minister arrived with a draft agenda for the conference and a report on what the President can expect from the six allies who will attend. Trudeau said Reagan can expect some frank discussions about his economic policies, but there should be no embarrassing moments. As they ended the meeting, the President said economic recovery is one of the free world's greatest challenges. Trudeau seemed to agree but reminded the president U.S. policies affect its allies as well. Coming up on sports, McEnroe gets stung at the Davis Cup. And the Royals, well, they're back home.
Isn't this a pretty sight? Now you can clean up tall weeds with Roundup herbicide. Walking my beans used to eat up time and money. But using Roundup through a rope wick knocked out those weeds for about half the cost of walking my beans. For free information about where to buy rope wick equipment or how you can build it, write down this toll-free number where you won't forget it. Call today, 800-453-4000. You owe it to yourself to take that money-saving drive to Ernie's in Soresco, where family after family, generation after generation have shopped Ernie's unique small-town low overhead prices. Now, during the big July clearance, save on all home furnishings and those famous GE refrigerators, freezers, washers, dryers, dishwashers, microwave ovens. You'll be amazed at Ernie's massive big city selection and ever-popular small-town prices. So take that money-saving drive now to Ernie's in Soresco and be amazed. The good old days are back at H&H &H Chevrolet with great news for new car and truck buyers. The biggest selection and the lowest finance charge in years. Look at the acres of new cars, new trucks and vans, all models, colors and equipment. And now look at the new low finance charge, just 13% this week only at H&H &H Chevrolet. More than 300 new cars and trucks. Choose yours this week and get the new low 13% financing. Hurry, this week only, H&H &H Chevrolet, 84th and L. Your clutch is shot. You'll know it. You shift gears and your car just sits there. At higher speeds, the engine revs at 60 and you creep along at 30. Call Mr. Clutch at 348-0100. The specialist at Mr. Clutch will tow you in for free and fix it in half a day. We'll fix it for less, give you a six-month warranty, and give you the choice of low monthly credit terms Visa or MasterCard. Call the specialist at Mr. Clutch, 348-0100. Mr. Clutch for shipless cars. I just asked Wayne if the Royals won. He said, oh, sure. It's like, it's normal. Spur Happens every day. Today, almost every day. They're 55 and 33 on the year, so they're doing pretty good. Yes, the Omaha Royals won tonight. They returned home to the friendly confines of Rosenblatt Stadium, and they met the Oklahoma City 89ers, the final Omaha 5-2. The Royals wasted no time scoring. A single runs they scored in the first and second innings for a 2-0 lead. In all honesty, though, Oklahoma City uh, had three errors. That helped Omaha in its early outburst. The Royals made it 3-0 before Oklahoma City lit up the scoreboard. The 89ers got a solo homer from Luis Rodriguez and eventually pulled within a run at 3-2. That's how it remained, heading into the bottom of the eighth. But with runners on second and third, Onyx Concepcion poked a two-run single, and the Royals had a 5-2 lead heading into the ninth. The 89ers were down quickly. Omaha registered a 5-2 win. Now the two teams play again tomorrow afternoon, game time, 2 o'clock, to accommodate a Kansas City TV station. The Davis Cup tennis tournament between the United States and Czechoslovakia started today in New York City. The tournament began with a bang as Ivan Lendl shocked Wimbledon champ John McEnroe got a new haircut, by the way. That gave the Czechs 1-0 lead. Although Lendl's win did not come easily, he did take the match in straight sets, give him credit, 6-4, or 14-12, and 7-5. That second set, by the way, lasted one hour and 45 minutes all by itself. Later, McEnroe said he was mentally and physically worn out by his ordeal at Wimbledon. Jimmy Connors, by the way, later beat Thomas Smith so that best of five Davis Cup Classic is tied at one all. The doubles matches are scheduled for tomorrow in New York City. The $150,000 added Cornhusker handicap is going to be tomorrow's feature race at Exarbon. Today, however, all the attention was on the $25,000 speed stakes. They're at the head of the stretch. Daddy Al with a head in front, and there's Smoke right now driving up to drive to the lead. Okatal is third. In the drive to the wire, it's Smoke Eye by two and a half. Okatal now second, and Daddy Al third. They're driving to the wire. It's Smoke Eye and Okatal. And Smoke Eye wins the speed stakes a length and a half. And here's the official finish. Smoke-Eyed Ogatal is in there for second place, and Murr the Blur, he got in there third. Real Valentine took the first one, paid $27.80. Barb Saylor was sec first in the second, paid $65.60. A double of seven and nine, seven hundred thirty-five dollars Frida's Bell paid $19.80 in the third. Jagged won the fourth, exclusively yours was second. Nine and four, exact $141. Carl's Pocket paid $6.60 in the fifth race. Hopeful Pat and Comet Dior were first and second in the sixth, 11 and seven exact of $113.80. Dutch at all won the seventh race and paid $11.60 to win. Viva Bill and Wishful Holiday were first and second in the final race, two and seven exact of their $37 even. In one football note, former Husker quarterback Ed Burns has signed a contract to return to the New Orleans Saints. And finally, the top female golfers in Nebraska are in Omaha for the match play tournament, which starts Monday at Oak Hills. Ross Sternstrom has this preview. 
The state match play tournament may again have a head-to-head -head duel with two of Omaha's finest golfers, Susan Marchese and Kathy Nelson. Last month, Marchese captured the Omaha City 18-hole championship by just one stroke over Nelson. The Oak Hills course has narrow fairways and several water hazards, but nevertheless, Marchese looks forward to the match play tourney. I think with match play you can you can afford to gamble a little bit when you've got when you go into trouble you know you take that chance of still playing for par where in metal play you can't you can't afford to do that because every stroke is so important see I really I like match play a lot better than metal one golfer that should have an advantage over the others is Kathy Nelson because Oak Hills is her home course well I shouldn't ever be hitting the wrong club into a green um, I think maybe once in a while you don't think as well on a home course. You take too many things for granted. And the course is not that tough a course, but it can catch you. And it's just you have to think over every shot. Nelson and Marchese will be out to challenge Val Skinner, the defending medal play champ from North Platte. The tournament will run all next week starting on Monday. Ross Jernstrom, Newswatch 7 Sports Update. Yeah, you're talking about a lot of money out that uh, That race, horse huh? race tomorrow, the Cornhusker, $169,000 plus dollars is really what it is. It's $150,000 added. The winner, should all 11 horses start, should get $93,000 compared to like $64,000 at the Gold Cup. So big money is at the track tomorrow. I had a quick thought on John McEnroe. What's sort of that? like the Samson syndrome. You That's cut right. his hair and he loses his strength. That was a strange hairdo. But he looks better. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Thanks. Still strange. Next on Update, we'll meet some Nebraska fighter pilots teaching others to be pilots. Financing rates are coming down during Omaha's Super Car and Truck Week, and trade-in values are going up. Your Dodge dealer will be throwing away the book on trade-in allowances, because he'll be doing better than the book. So let your old car do the paying for a change by helping towards a down payment on a new Dodge. Then finance with annual percentage rates as low as 13%. Don't miss Omaha's Super Car and Truck Week. This week only at big-hearted Joe Sockerman's Husker Dodge, 54th and L, Omaha. My mother taught me a lot, but the first two things I remember were to cook with gas and to do it with caloric. But today, she's got some surprises coming because my brand new gas caloric has features galore from the self-cleaning oven to this eye-level microwave. Mommy, Mommy, down up here! Now you're really cooking with gas. And caloric. See Kaufman Appliance, your full-service caloric dealer in Omaha. This woman doesn't like to use credit, so every time she makes a purchase, she goes through the ID hassle of writing a check. This woman has Visa Plastic Check from First Federal Lincoln. It works just like a check, except there's no identification problem. It's as fast and easy as charging, but she's not using credit. She's using funds from her Money Now checking account. She's earning interest instead of paying it. Plastic Check from First Federal Lincoln. A good reason to change where you bank. First Federal Lincoln. Olson's West Roads Auto World, in conjunction with participating Omaha banks, offers the lowest interest rate in years. Financing for as low as 13%. With prices slashed and 13% financing, you can't afford to miss this one-week super savings extravaganza at Olson's West Roads Auto World. Offer ends this weekend. Tonight on Closer Look, the final segment in a series of reports we taped recently while on special assignment with the Air Force in Texas. To fly a jet fighter aircraft, as hot as the heat reflected by the blistering Texas sun, a dream of many young men. A man who flies one of these sleek craft is Bellevue native Captain Jack Jackson. He's an instructor pilot with the Air Training Command, and he's a breed apart. Jack says if he can stand up in a plane, it's too big for him. Jack likes his fighters. Well, it's mostly just a fun plane to fly. Um, you know, that's the big deal. Plus, it's just one or two men in one plane, you know, doing the job instead of in a larger aircraft, you sometimes have a crew of anywhere from four to eight guys that you have to ride herd on. and. Uh, you know, just being one or two guys is 
I guess it's more my style, more what I would like. These fighter pilots are young and strong, among the best this country has to offer. And fighter pilot instructors take a special pride in their work. We have a mixture of uh, young guys and some of the older guys with experience, but uh, most of the guys we have are, are FAPES. That means that they're first assignment IP and they're coming right out of pilot training and being an instructor. But we do have a mix of people from other commands like SAC and TAC that uh, come in and uh, instruct for three to four years and give us a little bit of their experience. But the goal of these young men is to be assigned to and eventually command a fighter squadron. Young men who have truly slipped the surly bonds of Earth and dance the skies on laughter's silvered wings. Sunward they've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things we have not dreamed of. Very nice tip. Thank you. Charlie, tonight. I wish I could say something besides <laughs> what I got to say. It's going to be warm and humid tonight, warm and humid tomorrow. Coolest part of the day will be early tomorrow. It'll be about 75 degrees. It'll be about 20 or so degrees hotter than that by afternoon. Okay, thank you. For more on the fruit fly infestation and to spray or not to spray to solve the problem, that's next on Nightline. And join Anita Boyd this weekend for News Watch. For now, good night. Good night. The problem is California's. The fallout could be nationwide. Our focus tonight, the continuing possibility of a federal boycott against much of California's produce, and the enduring conflict over chemical spraying of crops and its potential danger to the general public. This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, 